just one environment. Let's switch gears a little bit and look at its neighbor built for a very different purpose and of course looking very different as well. So Smith Island kind of south in the Chesapeake, the Maryland side of, the, of those island chains in the Chesapeake. Um, this boat is, a, is slightly different. This is um, the Choptank River Shad Skiff. And for those of you who have never explored shad before, you might not have ever tasted shad or, or shad roe, but for many people watching this video, I'm sure you can remember maybe growing up with shad roe. It's something that's really disappeared from our plates as the number of shad in the bay has really declined in the 20th and the 21st century. But in the early part of the 20th century, and back through the 19th century, and even the 18th century, Shad fishing was really this big commercial fishery in the Chesapeake. I would actually argue it's the first commercial fishery in the Chesapeake. And that's because shad could be preserved just with salt. You didn't need these um, more, you, know, you didn't need pasteurization, you didn't need high temperatures, you didn't need special cans. So even colonists could salt fish and shad were incredibly abundant. They are a spring fishery, so boats like this were bit, built to use um, drift nets or gill nets as a method of catching the fish as they came in from the ocean up into these um, uh, water, these um, tributaries and these tidal estuaries to spawn. Um, and, you know, millions and millions of fish came every year. So this was another sort of spring economy in that seasonal waterman cycle. And you can see here, this is really a vessel that says to me, Oh, this is a, a shallow, relatively shallow water vessel. This would have been one that you would have rowed, um, but they do have a section here in the back um, where you could have put connected an outboard engine. So again, this is a 20th century boat. You can kind of read the way that it was built. Um, and this allowed, you know, this boat was built in such a way that it would allow multiple people to be able to carry fish in the boat, but also to carry the lines that were associated. And this was used by the Angle family for years, um, right about where, if you're familiar with um, Talbot County and Caroline County geography, where the Dover Bridge is today. So this would have been a, a, a vessel specifically for shad fishing. Again, people were building boats to meet highly specific requirements. You might have one boat just for crabbing and a totally different boat for shad fishing. You know, if these are the tools to help you do your job, you're going to need a variety of different tools specifically built for that purpose. All right, so our last boat today, I want you to come on around and we'll take a look at this quite uh, ugly, <laughs> but highly functional vessel. Um, you know, I like to, um, when we have school groups visit, I like to kind of give them a little test and ask them, how did this boat move? You know, when you look at a vessel like the, the Chop Tank River uh, Shad Skiff that we just looked at, it's clear that there's a place for an engine. You know, they've got oar locks most of the time so that, you know, if you're rowing, you can, you can make that connection. Or there might be a place to step a mast in the case of a sailboat. But with this example, there's really nothing obvious. And that's because it's totally a trick question. This particular boat um, was this, this skiff was built not to be um, navigated um, by itself, but to be towed. So this particular vessel, I mean, you look at this, this thing is built like iron. Uh, there's nothing graceful or delicate about this. This is not a needle, if we're to use um, the description that I did earlier to talk about the crab skiff. This is more like an ironing board. Um, this particular vessel would have been used out of fishing communities like Tillman Island um, to harvest from pound nets. And so if you don't know what a pound net is, a pound net is really an open water fish trap that uses a series of shapes kind of like a heart to funnel fish in um, using a series of nets and poles into this, what they call the pound, which essentially the center of the trap where all the fish um, get you know, uh, stored up together. So this vessel was built to be towed out to these pound nets, which are just, if you've never seen them, they are absolutely teeming with thousands and thousands of pounds sometimes of all different species of fish. And you, you would have multiple people that would need to get into this boat so that they could pull these nets up and over and, and um, dip out the fish that were inside. So if you look at the construction of this monster, it is 
built with some crazy freeboard. I mean, you look at how high the sides of this boat are and really compare it to some of the other ones that we've seen. I mean, it's up out of the water really high. One reason is because obviously you're using this in, in much bigger water than you would have it on a river or around Smith Island. Um, the other reason is because you would need lots of guys, big strong men, all on one side of this boat pulling the net up and over. You don't want to take on water. So this boat is designed so that a lot of people can lean to the side pretty heavily um, without, you know, sinking the boat. So again, it's just, it's not a beautiful boat, but what's beautiful about it is the sense of purpose that each of these different boats displays. The amount of innovation and the way that people in the Chesapeake were able to adapt the tools that they used to the work that they needed and to the environment that they were in. So I love these boats, I love the stories behind them, and I hope you've enjoyed getting a little bit of a longer tour, a couple objects in a row um, connected here at the Maritime Museum. If you liked it, let us know. We'll do more tours, um, and hopefully you'll tune in for us again next week um, with another episode of Chesapeake Treasure. Thanks so much. Have a great afternoon.